Greetings, everyone. This is the Sound Out Austin Show with Richard Austin Guy and Sherry Edwards. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning. Great day. I've been thinking all morning, Richard, why do we do this show? Um, <laughs> I stand you in. I'll kind of fall into with the, uh, considering our guest, because we give a damn. Yes. I am very sure that you have better things to do with your Sunday morning out there in glorious, beautiful California. And I certainly have a lot to do running the business. But we care. We want to make a difference. And we have such a great audience that give us really good ideas about what they want to see on the show. And right now, people are afraid of our government. And we talked last week on um, Blog Talk about um, a book written by Terry Ingram about the police state, because that's what we were talking about. We had such an avalanche of positive um, questions about things that they wanted to know, and we tried to shift them to his book. And uh, finally, I just gave up with all the questions, and I, I just wrote to Terry and said, could you be on the show? And absolutely he could, because I think he gives a damn, too. And we rescheduled our normal person to get Terry on, and I am so happy we've got such an, an authentic person who wants to help. Boy, I said all the things we should have said like 10 minutes into the show, but we forgot to say, uh, or I forgot to say, well, I should let you talk, Richard, Don't, because you give a damn. Do you want to add something to that? No, I think that's, I, that's really it. I mean, we're here because we care. You want people to have access to your information about how they can have things like, the, you know, the amazing, the ever amazing free nano voice that they can use to check themselves for imbalances or, you know, allergies. Something as simple, I thought that in quotes. Uh, you know, checking for allergies or checking for something. And you really want people to have this information, such as the Guardians Network and those kinds of things that you, you know, put out into the world because you know that it can help people change and be empowered. And I think that's why we're both excited about Terry Ingram being on today because he's from a different realm but equally as interested in people being empowered. And I'm all about, you know, people knowing. Something. <laughs> and and most of what we provide to people is free. So they can yeah. do okay. their own allergy testing and that kind of thing because we supply the software for free. They can go to our site, soundhealthoptions.com, and look at what's provided there under downloads and free classes and free videos um, because we care and we care about self responsibility. I think that's one of the things that Mr. Ingram is, is talking about, too. But we should let people know that we are simultaneously broadcasting. They can call into the show at 347-850-1407. And they can also join us to watch the show by going to our site, at soundhealthoptions.com. Go to radio, and it gives you a link. So you can watch the show. And there's some powerful things that we're going to be sharing and showing today. We're sponsored by the Sound Health Research Institute, a nonprofit 501c3 located in Ohio. We do educational research and the effects of sound on living systems. We looked at part of this last week, but I want to just catch people up just a little bit. Because, <clears throat> Richard, this is something you brought up. There was a guy on the street, big guy, who was selling a single cigarette. The police decided to harass him. I guess selling a single cigarette is illegal. What is it? Fifty cents a dollar? I don't know how much cigarette costs anymore. But the police surrounded him, got him in a chokehold, and killed him over selling a single cigarette. What rights does that guy have when the police accost him on the street? 
and we're seeing a lot of corruption in my own city here. Our p chief of police was found guilty of lying to a grand jury. And there's a local constable that just was found guilty of hiding a felon and doing drugs. It's come to the point where we can't look at the policeman anymore as somebody we call when there's a problem because they have become part of the problem. I'll give you another for instance, and I'm hoping our guests can uh, address this. We have a bioacoustic practitioner. Two people, big guys, came to her door and said they wanted her records. And she was stunned about what records. She's a biochemist and does blood work and that kind of thing for people. Well, she just welcomed them on in, and one of them uh, took a record of hers. While she was being questioned by one, the other one was running around and um, took a record. And they filed charges against her and tried to get her client to help them file charges. Her client wouldn't. But that's dirty. So we see that all over. And what's the country coming to? And that's one of the questions I'm going to ask uh, Terry. Richard, do we have anything else we need to do up front before we bring on our guest? I think I'll just let people know that uh, for the people on Blog Up Radio, if you want to watch the visuals that the Sherry's talking about, you can go to soundhealthoptions.com click on the radio tab and click on Blog Talk Radio and the instructions and the links are down there. And for the people on WebEx, I'll let you know that we're also broadcasting over at Blog Talk Radio that we're hearing me from. And as Sherry said, you can call in and listen there at 347-850-1407. And also there's a link in the show notes, say on that same uh, sound health options and then radio and then Blog Talk Radio. You can scroll down there, and there's a link to take you to the page there where if you wanted to join chat over at Blog Talk Radio as well. And there's chats both places if they have questions for our guests or just comments. Okay, would you like to introduce our guest? I would be delighted. Um, let me just get to that page. Had a little bit of technical excitement this morning, but it's all okay now. <laughs> There is definitely a drum roll there. Uh, Terry Ingram is a decorated veteran police officer with 12 years experience in robbery, homicide, vice, intelligence, narcotics, and uniform patrol. As a decorated, as, and as a decorated combat Vietnam veteran, having served his country honorably for six years, Terry founded Law in Simple Terms in a, as an organization which teaches the art of proper litigation. Terry developed an easy-to-comprehend course for laypersons, which teaches the proper application of civil rights in the face of government confrontation, as well as how to negotiate the legal system without the aid or assistance of an attorney and much more. One of the purposes of Terry's classes is to educate government, and particularly the law enforcement community, about the true nature of its relationship with the American people. This is accomplished through acquired knowledge and self-representation in lawsuits, both civil and criminal. Government and law enforcement as well use a plethora of rules, regulations, and statutes to keep the people in their place. For more than 20 years, Terry has simply and successfully been teaching the convert. Terry is not an attorney, nor has he been disadvantaged, aligned, or encumbered by membership into any bar association. He's never represented anyone and teaches average people how to represent themselves. Terry has a unique understanding of jurisprudence, having had more than 40 years of experience dealing with government from both sides of the fence. Terry's here to talk with us about his book, Police State, 10 Secrets the Police Don't Want You to Know, How to Survive Police Encounters. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Richard. How are you? Nice to be with you. And I couldn't have said that much better if I, if I had written it myself. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking online, Terry, um, at your book, Police State, uh, okay. from Amazon, and people love that book. We're also looking at your YouTube 
there's a lot here about people needing to protect themselves. How did we the people get in a situation where we are now afraid of our government, afraid of our sheriffs, afraid of our police state? How did we get here? That's a great question, and uh, the short answer is uh, our educational process, our, our um, brainwashing from, uh, if you will, from uh, kindergarten through high school, uh, 12 years of, uh, of government formation, uh, government uh, introduction to uh, an authoritarian type of, uh, of system, uh, pretty, pretty much uh, summarizes uh, the whole process. Uh, and then, of course, we have people in our community uh, uh, enforcing government uh, authoritarian type of uh, mentality, telling on your name or, uh, you know, uh, you can, uh, if you smell marijuana next door or something, or, or somebody's injecting something in their body that they choose to, and, and you know it's uh, 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 a statutory crime, calling the police, turning them in, that type of thing. That's what they taught us to do, and they basically have divided and pocketed us. Uh, they have basically divided and, and, and pocketed us and uh, deliberately de-educated us. And the very most important things that we should uh, understand about um, our lives in this country, and that is uh, our inalienable rights. Uh, the Bill of Rights is simply a, a document that we wanted to impress upon any government that these were uh, things that were nearest and dearest to us. They're by no means uh, were they the, uh, the complete uh, population of all of our rights. We have we have every right uh, to do everything up until you know, uh, it begins to affect you or it begins to affect the the, uh, the public at large. And uh, we've just been indoctrinated uh, to uh, gain attention. Uh, you know, I I'm, I was uh, I'm 64 years old, and I was. Uh, uh, attended the very first police academy in Broward County, Florida, that was a formal police academy. We were called the New Breed. And prior to uh, my entrance into the police academy, which was a four-month uh, student, uh, in order to be a police officer in Florida, anyway, you simply passed the civil service test. You were assigned to a uh, to a uh, training officer which I eventually became a training officer as well. And uh, then you learned your first year on probation, you learned uh, how to be a policeman, how to handle it, the policy, how to act, uh, how, I don't know, how, how to uh, respond instead of better. So, uh, and they wanted to to uh, improve the police officer's uh, status in society, like teachers and, and such. And uh, they decided to create this uh, organization uh, to certify police officers by the state, thereby giving them for giving the state of control over police and, and being able to uh, to uh, 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 disqualify that, that, that certificate. And I was the very first thing you got out. That was a pretty soft academy uh, when I when it was pretty informal. Uh, it was the very first one uh, that had a number of people from uh, from the local colleges. Uh, you know, uh, 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 attorneys, et cetera, and the state attorney's office, et cetera, and many people would come and, 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 and discuss the law with us, and that type of thing. Uh, nowadays, now I drive by, you know, many, many years later, and, uh, and, this, and this, oh, by the way, there's a little uh, uh, physical training to everything. You have to you know, run around the track, do some push ups, and you have to be in you know, some kind of general shape, a you know, you know, fair shape. Now they're out there, uh, uh, you know, standing in pension, standing in squad formations, uh, they're saluting, uh, the, uh, the instructors pulling them to drop down and get 20. I mean, this is a, uh, uh, it's not a paramilitary organization, it's a military organization. And, uh, and they, and they have the same exact kind of case command, uh, uh, if, uh, if your sergeant approaches you, uh, or if your lieutenant or your captain approaches you, you better snap your attention, you better, you better not walk back, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Like in, in my day, of course, it was uh, pretty much, you know, the sergeants and lieutenants were just other uh, police officers who would have administrative authority over what we did. 
everybody got along pretty well. Now they uh, are quite a good story. I did, however, listen to, uh, uh, by the way, your uh, one of your shows that you had on uh, about being, becoming a wrestler. And uh, and uh, I, I thought it was uh, just uh, a little bit lacking in, in, in what you can actually do, what you as a person can actually do in this police state. Uh, how can you, you know, what, you know, it's wonderful to talk about the, the philosophy and the gloom and the doom, but what about, A, the problem side, and B, what can you personally do about it? Now, uh, if you would like, let's take the example of your friend uh, who, who, uh, who had the uh, official knock on the door uh, regarding something that she was probably uh, engaged in some type of licensing from them, and they would you know, come up to her house, knock on the door, and and it would be the polite thing to do to open the door and, and offer somebody a coffee and come in and chat, et cetera. But this isn't, you when know, they aren't your friends anymore. These people are, 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 are in business to, to find you. The police are in business to arrest you, just like the, uh, that, uh, attorney that, uh, that, uh, previously. That, that's what they get paid for. If you, if, you know, if, there are no quotas out there, so to speak. There are simply, uh, pass on the back for, for more tickets you write, pass on the back for more arrests that you make, and, uh, and promotion, uh, forthcoming, and, uh, put you on midnight if, if you're, if, if, if you're a slouch and you're not, uh, creating revenue for the city. And that was back in, in the 70s and 80s when I was a good software. Uh, uh, that, that mentality was there. And, uh, and, but then yeah, I know that we lost it, but, uh, been told now. So really, really heavily concentrated on uh, on on producing. Got to produce, 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 produce. So anyway, I, just, I want to jump in there. I want to jump in there. Yeah, of course. Sure. Sure. And, yeah. and ask you sort of if, if you have this, I don't know if you talk about this in, a, in your book, but you have so much experience and you were of a similar age range in 62. And okay. when I was a kid, when I was a kid growing up, you know, you know, not really, a, you know, kind of a rural area. Uh, the sheriffs were the kind of guys that if you were out doing something stupid, nothing, you know, horrible, you know, knocking over a porta potty, that would be pretty bad. And a sheriff would come along and say, you know, like, he would use expletives and, you know, it was a small town, so they knew who we were and they'd say, what the hell are you doing? And, you know, get in the car, I'm taking you home. And that would be kind of it. I don't mean they were like dumb or I don't mean that at all. They were officers who were there to you know, they were they were police officers. They meant to that. If they were and they, they were more protectors. They were not so much you know, you have in your exactly. history of like when did that exactly. change to the police being a profit setter versus something to protect and serve? You know? I believe I believe that it changed in nineteen seventy four in Florida when they uh, actualized the first police academy where where you would have to uh, go through the process. And they called us the new brief. So, uh, from wherever that came from, from whatever higher authority came from, and this was a, uh, an attempt, a successful attempt to, uh, to, uh, uh, bring the police into this, into this police state problem. You know, they, 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 you know, they, they, the people who are, who, who speak against the government to remove these police officers are dissidents. They're, they're, uh, they're terrorists. Because you express your opinion about uh, some particular government official or or some particular law, they, they're they're taught to look at you uh, in, 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 as as uh, as uh, uh, a non-cooperating citizen, which is they would call you a, a, a dirtbag or a scumbag or you know somebody like that just because of your political beliefs. And uh, this is what they're uh, this is the indoctrination. And uh, and I am not blaming the system. I am blaming the police officers because uh, you know they are responsible. They know exactly what they're doing. Uh, they got a good job. They got good security. I mean, uh, it's not like we're not getting more and more police every day. And of course, crime goes up. The more police officers we have, because the more police officers we have, the more laws that we have to enforce. Well, they're 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 enforcing robbery, homicide, uh, rape. Uh, burglaries, et cetera, and then all of a sudden, uh, they get, uh, send more police officers, and now they're doing DUIs a lot more, and they're doing things more, 
Uh, you get more police officers and other jaywalking and spinning and, and, uh, and busting a guy or selling a cigarette for a buck on the street, you know, all kind of thing. Uh, and I, I've got something to say about that particular incident that, uh, that uh, Sherry brought up, too, on both those incidents, on um, probably what happened. Why that happened, and it's not nearly as alarming as, as most people think. If you know what to do and you know how to act, and you begin to understand your, your rights, their limitations. Now, a police officer is not going to knock on your door or, or ask you to open your trunk or search your glove box. He has a right to do it. He's just going to do it. If, if, if he has a warrant, if he has some type of public cause that can get by a warrant, He's going to ask. He's not going to ask you to permit to do things. Step out of the way, or else. And when I was involved in, in, in warranted uh, uh, seizures and, and searches, we didn't uh, uh, alert except at the time uh, that we were breaking in. We didn't want anybody to flush the pump in that we were trying to uh, weed out. We had the uh, the uh, sledgehammers and, uh, and battering rams. And, we bust in like gangbusters from every single orifice in the house, scare the crap out of everybody. This is the intentional thing that we do because we want people to 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 uh, panic in such a way that they do nothing, but to be so afraid uh, of all these things. That's why the excuse is et cetera. It's a deliberate thing uh, to psychologically uh, keep you down and and uh, uh, you know, for their safety. So if they have the right to do this, first off, they're going to do it contrary to what you like. So the first thing you need to know when the police officer asks you, can I come in? Or can I look and search your trunk? Or can you read your pocket for me? Or you need to be said uh, in a special in a manner, uh, sir, in your pocket on the hood of the car. That's a request. It's not, it's not an order. And you, you have every right to do that. You have every right to do people with police officers. Under any circumstance, there are a plethora of case law uh, from the Supreme Court of the United States to the Supreme Court of each and every state. Say the Fifth Amendment means exactly what it says. You have the right to dip your lip, to button it up, and not say a word to anybody. And that can't be used against you and your trial if you have a criminal trial. Uh, in fact, the judge must instruct the jury specifically. You may not. Use Mr. Ingram's silence at the time he was arrested as grounds to believe that he has something to hide because it is a constitutional right and he has the right and even the duty to exercise it. Do, do we, so he instructs the jury specifically that. So the things you hear about the like, what's bad for you? You know, you're, 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 you're becoming suspicious. It's a psychological attempt. To intimidate you, to get you to do what you want. You can see it all the time on these cop shows, uh, et cetera. You see him. Uh, uh, how many times do you see him? He's going in and, and, uh, and uh, opening the doors and locking the houses. No, they knock on the door and they, and they use their, 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 uh, their techniques to, to wiggle their way in. And all of a sudden, before you know it, they're in, they're, they're, they're in your, your, your front door. And, and now they're looking around and before now they see something. Because they have your your uh, your consent to be in their house, of course you don't feel like they have their consent. But but uh, you're afraid to push back, and I'm not talking about physically. It's never one physical at all. That's a losing battle. But uh, uh, the, the, of course, uh, to you maybe look at some of my videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, but you don't open the door for these people. Okay? Right. It, 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 it's, it's a new age when the police officer is no longer your friend. He no longer has my respect. And people need to take a, a, uh, uh, a, a an active role in letting them know, uh, if, at some level, that we don't appreciate your behavior. Uh, how many people do you still see out there constantly waving to the police and then, hi, sir, going up there to him and, and, and to my language, sucking up to them and, and, uh, and uh, oh, yes, sir, what about this? And, no. And all, you know, these we, we, people are naturally uh, the, the, the fathers of society and and the uh, dispenser of, of all things wise. You know, and yesterday they were working uh, like me the day before I put, uh, donned my uniform. 
I was uh, digging ditches for a, a local union uh, in South Florida. And the next day I put my uniform on, I was all of a sudden the expert. I knew, I was supposedly knew everything about guns, knew everything about the law, knew everything about uh, 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 life itself. Even. So people would ask you uh, uh, all kinds of personal questions about how I should act, et cetera, et cetera. So this is all, all the indoctrination from our government education system. It got us to the point to be afraid of these people. And we need to unlearn that formal education. And, yeah. uh, and yeah. become a, a lawyer, in my opinion, which, uh, you know, I have great respect for everybody uh, uh, until they just give me an opportunity not to respect them. And I've had many encounters with lawyers, and uh, uh, although they're, they're, they perform a, a function and they perform a good function, uh, they, I don't believe they should be used as frequently as they're used, and I don't think that uh, besides your mortgage, your car payment, your electric bill, your kids, you should need to put a separate fund aside to call your attorney when the police officer confronts you and you don't know what to do except for grab onto your pants and, uh, and keep your mouth shut. Now, there are plenty of things you can do. Once you understand what your rights are and what their limitations are, it's smooth sailing. It's easy. I don't care if they even act out. I don't care if if uh, if, uh, if you if, if you don't give them permission and they go ahead and they search your car without permission. You simply make your objection, and your tool, which is now by the Supreme Court, is certainly uh, uh, a fact that you may video and audio tape anybody you choose, let alone a police officer, in public when they have no expectation of privacy. I bought a pair of sunglasses from Amazon.com, range 25 bucks to 75 bucks, as a 720, uh, uh, whatever that, that is, uh, anyway, it's very good video. It's video and audio, it's no key dot right in the middle of my sunglasses, and it, you won't find me without it. If I'm out of this house, or if somebody's knocking on my door, and I don't know who it is, my sunglasses are off, you know, and, uh, and my video, one little button, I've got an hour and a half or so of uh, a video and audio. So if I just stop by the police or whatever they think they'd be, sometimes I'll just turn around when I'm driving in my car. And, uh, you know, just uh, perhaps uh, I'll, uh, I'll see an incident that, uh, that, I, that, that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to uh, to, to, to focus on. Maybe I'll see a wreck or maybe I'll see, uh, you know, something happening on the side of the road or whatever. I just, I just do a fun stuff down. But your, 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 your weapon is your video and audio recording. Watch the difference in their attitude when 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 their actions are going to be reviewed by their superiors, by uh, uh, a court, perhaps, if it's a criminal activity. They're not going to misbehave. That's why they hate it so much. They hate it. That they, 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 they get angry that the audacity of you with the peon Daring to, uh, to videotape me challenges my authority. Now, uh, they're, they're, they're changing their things now. They're being taught in, uh, in separate classes, uh, on the job cleaning classes that don't harass anybody who's getting you. They can tape record you and they can, and they can video and audio record you anytime they want as long as they're not interfering. They're not interfering. But of course, if you're the person Who's uh, involved in the encounter? Then you have every right to, uh, to take up until the point, and unless you're incarcerated, if you're incarcerated. Well, then you can check your video off, and uh, uh, you can object if you like. But uh, they would have a right to, to take your property and into their possession, check in your pockets, etc. These aren't searches uh, without warrant. These are custodial searches. They call them. Which is, since I have custody of your body, I'm now responsible for all of your belongings. So I'm not responsible for my safety, the safety of the other people in jail, so I'm going to frisk you and I'm going to look at your pockets and all these other things. But this is to be, uh, to be used, uh, uh, through inventory, uh, but of course if they find, uh, some contraband on you, they're going to give it a charity and all of that. I don't know if I'm random, so go ahead and have a question. Jerry, we have several questions from our audience. And some of them are back backing up this 
these wonderful things you were saying, what would be the appropriate thing to say to the police officer that said, empty your pockets on the hood of this car? No. Um, no, thank you, officer, or no, just? No, 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 wait, wait. Why no thank you? I, 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 don't, I don't like these people. I don't respect them. And I and, and let me correct that. I don't dislike those people. I don't like their behavior. Yeah, I'm sure they're fine people. I'm sure they've got kids. I'm sure they've got friends. I'm sure they've got mothers and fathers. I'm sure they're decent human beings at some level. I don't like what they're doing in our society. They have lost my respect. I am not going to no thank you them and uh and uh no sir I'd rather be on my way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now you have every right not to speak and every right to say no. And of course, uh uh these thoughts are afraid, well, what did you got to hide? And my response would be, or could be, should be silent if I wanted to be uh uh talkative about it. I may have uh, uh, many things to hide. I may have stuff in my, in fact, I do have secrets in my trunk, officer, that I don't want you to know about. I have things that I want to keep private that I don't want you to know about, and unless you have a Fourth Amendment search form, you're not going to look in that trunk. Now, I'm not a violent person. If you do what you got to do, but you're being audio tape and video tape. If you do not have my permission to search, you will not search. Do what you got to do, and let me be on my way. Are these the uh, kinds of things yeah. that are in your book? Yes. And in your video? Yeah, that, that, that and, and as well, as you, go to my, as you go to my YouTube site, you'll find a lot of free videos uh, on there that, uh, that uh, cover these issues, cover uh, the police at your door, uh, you know, uh, encounters with police. So now, I, I'm, I'm giving you a kind of a shock treatment with being a little bit aggressive. And I know it sounds a little aggressive to you. You don't have to be that aggressive. You can just be silent. Now, it's very uncomfortable for anyone who's ever been in a position where to be questioned about uh, criminal activity or speeding or whatever it may be, but you make admissions and confessions, and those admissions and confessions are voluntary and they're used against you. Okay? The officer, when he says, how fast did you, uh, uh, speak, or, or, or sir, do you know why I was, uh, was, uh, uh, you know, I, I stopped you? Uh, you may say, no, sir, or I was speeding, or, or I don't think I was doing anything wrong. But if, if you have to, your response may be just silent. You are required to get your license for trace and insurance. From that point forward, breathe through your nose. That means you don't open your mouth. You don't speak at all. You have the right to sit there and say absolutely nothing. If you want to, you know, once you become uh, 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 more practiced at understanding what your rights are, you can legitimately enter into an intelligent conversation with the officer and say, oh, you want me to lift in my pocket? Uh, would you kindly articulate your suspicions of my criminal activity? And I came up with that phraseology because the Supreme Court of the United States coined that phraseology. So they said in order for them to to uh, to, uh, to even continue on a on a uh, an investigative track where I may be required to uh, not leave, I'm never, I'm never required to cooperate. Okay, you stop cooperating. You never cooperate with the police, even if you're perfectly totally guilty. There are plenty of videos and books out there saying how many people have gotten in trouble and they weren't even guilty. And, and, and look at this guy with a cigarette, and look at your friend, and the people who are, you know, busting their door. All these things are, are you know, can snowball to uh, the nth degree. We have two more but, questions uh, from the audience, and then yeah. I want to ask you about your tape. Um, one of them, of the questions is, in that Boston martial, um, martial law, whatever, when they were running people out of their homes, and without clothes, without shoes, without baby formula, one woman without her insulin, how were they able to do that? And what happened to those people? Were they able to sue? Okay, okay, excellent question. Excellent point. Now we're looking at this in hindsight, and we're looking at people that that, that have been indoctrinated. So it's not uh, 
it's not uh, 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 unknown that they would do something like this and react that way. But in reality, the city, there, there, there was no police state there whatsoever. Everybody who came out, I think I've seen out voluntarily. The police are yelling, uh, we're looking for a suspect or a terrorist or whatever case may be, come out of your house, et cetera. Did they break into one person's house? Uh, as far as I'm aware, they did not. They had guns. If they stayed in their house, if, 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 if everyone was staying in their house, then the person with the insulin, the person with the, uh, with the, uh, no baby, uh, uh, no, no, no born with the baby, they could have been their life and watched their cartoons, whatever they wanted to do. Now, I understand that when the police are out in your, your, in your front, uh, door, uh, alerting you that there's a terrorist, uh, around, uh, you know, but, uh, if there was a terrorist, uh, around my neighborhood and the police are out there yelling, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, take whatever personal protection I have to protect me and my family, and I'm not going to let anybody in and join the police. That was someone in my house. Uh, you know, and, and if I wanted to walk right to these people, I'm, I'll, I'll certainly yell through the door that ain't nobody in here. Now, now look, if they have the right to come in, let them execute that right. That's, that's, that's the, always the answer. If they have the, the legal right to come in, A, nine times out of ten, they're never going to ask that they're just going to do it. And B, they always get in because you opened your door. And would you step outside, please, sir? Can you talk out here, please, sir? And of course, if you want to cooperate, you know, be nice. Uh, police officers talk to you for, uh, for, uh, for driving, uh, uh, proceeding. And you know, you've kind of got, you know, uh, 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 in, you know, you're walking a hard place. You want to cooperate because you think he's going to, he's going to give you a break. And he says, uh, do you have any drugs or alcohol or, or contraband, or dead bodies, or cocaine, or moving your bombs, or whatever you have in your car, sir, that uh, you may want to make an admission or a confession to me. And people are, are continuously going, okay, you can look, go ahead, and of course, the guy that was going or something like that, they know goes to jail, they know gets the ticket, they got the problem with us and stops, and uh, gets his car towed, it's better, better. The guys out there to help Okay, so... Uh, so we uh, really, so we really, I want to, I want to really get clear on this point that at the point at which, like a couple of years back, I was stopped, I didn't know why, by a small you know, police department. And okay. when they pulled me over, they eventually told me that they pulled me over because of a taillight issue with the DS, but that's a separate thing. And they asked, is there anything in the car that I should know about? And I, at the time, having not watched your videos or talked with you, had had a small container of marijuana in my bag because my girlfriend at that time got migraines yeah. and she would have a nice to smoke some dope and it would stop her migraines. I hadn't smoked, I hadn't drank, I hadn't done anything. I had done nothing wrong in the context of where we were, but I had this in my bag and I, of course, copped to it because he asked me. He did exactly what you're saying. He said, do you have anything we should know about? And at that point, my report is, no, you don't have a right, or I, you know, you don't. We have a search warrant, or what's my immediate response then? The best question you can always come up with is you always want to answer their questions with a question and response. If in fact you want to have a dialogue at all, okay. So as soon as you start even discussing uh, the weather with them, they're going to end up turning that whole thing around, straight around on you, and get the and, and get information from you. You can very simply say, uh, when the officer says to you, do you have anything in your car, you say to him or her, what is the nature of your inquiry, sir? Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps he'll understand that statement, and perhaps he'll ask for clarification. And you can say, well, uh, obviously the government isn't it. The government has, has, has accosted me. They, they paid me. They deprived me of my liberty, and, uh, and they have to have a legitimate reason to do so. Because we have the right to be protected against a lawful search and procedure, but we have no right to be protected against lawful search and procedure. So again, every right to say to him, what's the nature of your inquiry? And he responds, what do you mean? Or, or, or I just want to know what you got in your car. Uh, your response would be, well, you didn't answer my question. Uh, is this a civil or a criminal investigation? Is this a criminal investigation? 
You see, and then what you're doing is you're actually the officer aware that he has exactly what I'm doing. Why the heck? People are really on the fishing trip. I'm trying to get as many people out there to raise their hand and say, how many of you would like to go to jail today? How many of you would like to make a, a mission or confession to a crime? They don't don't misinterpret what I'm saying that uh, I agree that people go around the side of the crime. But they, no, when you criminalize eating a banana at the Democrat convention, or you criminalize uh, 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 inhaling a, a substance uh, uh, for your own use, whether or not I agree with it, uh, well, then, of course, I, I, be, I begin to have trouble with that. With those type of things. When there's a loss, damage, or an injury, uh, you're, you're, you're looking at, uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, perhaps uh, a crime. But all these things are, they're, 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 they're just crimes are everywhere. There's a crime if you hurt my feelings. If you hurt my feelings in public, you can, go to, you, you can be civilly charged with it. You have to make the character. If you say something about me on board and make me upset, uh, there, there are some, there are laws. Like but anyway, back to what you were saying, what you were saying with your resident, uh, it's asking the nature of this inquiry. Are you conducting an investigation? If so, is it civil or is it criminal? If it's civil, I don't want to talk to you. If it's, uh, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I don't have to talk to you. And if it's uh, criminal, I don't have to talk to you. If it's a Fifth Amendment, uh, 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 it doesn't give you the right because you already have that right in any of those, but it, it, it uh, uh, imposes uh, again your right to remain silent. So, yeah, maybe I got all kinds of stuff. Uh, I have somebody, some postcard stuff uh, on the boat. I, I was in the capital, and uh, they wanted my identification. I said no, and they were, they were taking them back. Here, I'm out, uh, I mean, on the interval from Florida, because we went too fast in the Manaphy area, and the captain did. And they were going to give me a ticket, and they said, oh, I want your ID. I said, you want your ID. And so they, they took us over to the Coast Guard station, and, uh, and, and they said, well, you know, how do I know that you're not, uh, uh, you know, wanted or something, or, or you, have, you have a warrant against you? I said, well, that's a great point. You may have the... Number one on the top ten most wanted in the country, right here in front of you, but you're not going to know. Not from my mouth. You do whatever you need to do, or you think you need to do, but there are uh, consequences, and I'm talking about legal consequences, not physical consequences to your actions. So if you're making career decisions here, so consider that carefully. And then you've got their, their, their supervisor and commander to come out. Uh, the same, uh, I've got this fact they won my, uh, my, uh, friend uh, who was captain of the boat, like a 30 people boat or whatever. Uh, they wanted him to think of you, I guess, like that, because, uh, he had had a couple of beers. I said, yeah, he's not going to take a beer to be like that. He doesn't have a, a, a license to drive a boat. He has no right to do that. Not taking your test. They didn't give him the test. And they had a little squad of little soldiers uh, surrounding me every time I moved. Uh, they moved and I walked walk over here and they, like little thin soldiers, they followed me around. They actually called the Hollywood police. My old alma mater and the Hollywood police came out and uh, the sergeant who came out uh, did not know me, did not know I was uh, a foreign police officer, nor did I tell him. And he said, why don't you just because, uh, you know, sir, why don't you give me your name and we have your way? And I said, uh, because the longer they help me here, the better Title 42 civil rights action I'm going to have against them. So that would be the conversation. I was released. Captain was released. Uh, they may have given him a citation for his horn not working. But he did that because it didn't work. They just didn't have the battery on to make the horn work. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's just a, a, an example. Uh, I don't want people to go out and start, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting themselves in trouble and, and getting themselves so fucked up that they're gonna uh, that, that they're gonna fight off more than they can chew. But I'm telling you that uh, you know this is this is seventh grade civics. Okay, understanding the law is standby. It is not a complicated matter. It's an extremely simple matter. The civil rules of procedure, the criminal rules of procedure, uh, the, the Florida statutes, the indexing system that's there, everything. 
anybody, even people who can hardly read or write, can get redress of grievance in this wonderful system that we have. It is a really good system. It's just unknown to all of us. You're all afraid because you don't know what you may have done wrong, or you don't know what your rights are. You kind of know what your rights are, but you don't know what the police officer could do uh, to you, and uh, nobody wants to take a trip to jail. But if he doesn't have rounds, he's not going to take it to jail. You know, they are more afraid of, 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 of having a complaint made against them through internal affairs than they are your threat of a lawsuit to them. Okay, yeah. So I, I want to read. I want to read directly. I want to redirect you just for a moment, but I, we will get back to this because I really want to get back to talking about your ten pictures. Uh, you may you had said when Sherry had mentioned the cigarette, what I call the cigarette incident, where the gentleman yeah. was, you know, ultimately I believe choked or strangled the cigarette. Yeah. You had a comment about that, and I'm interested in your comment about that. Okay. Well, here's how I went. Okay. In my mind, often when I go to there, I haven't even ever read about it, but I can generally tell you what happens in those types of, of, of situations. Okay, the police officers decided that they were going to bully this guy. The guy didn't want to be bullied. So it escalated from there. You understand that, that if, if a police officer has a lawful right to confront you, one of your choices is to continue to walk. He orders you to stop. Things to be in the print of arrest, and you can have to stop. You still don't have to speak. Uh, the, the the guy uh, probably uh, unknowingly uh, began to argue with the police. He began to, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a ridiculous thing, isn't it? Can you imagine the frustration of the guy with the cigarette selling it to somebody for 50 cents? When the, you know, when the, uh, when the police approach them, like, you know, hey man, what is, you know, why the effort you have to you have know, on me? Uh, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm selling a cigarette. You're, you know, you've got nothing better to do with your time. Well, then there you go. And you got the escalation. Now the police officers are going to feed off that and get you to get more and more angry. And you know, give me your ID, et cetera, et cetera. And then, then they now have some uh, some offense they think, which uh, which uh, it, it, it would not be uh, 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 a unless you mind them. Something without the uh, criminal offense uh, to, to sell it, but on top of that, uh, you wouldn't have had to admit to even selling it. But I, I guarantee you that it escalated to to this frustration, a police officer speeding into it, getting him to resist arrest, uh, uh, and then the, the ball uh, uh, rolled out on the carpet, out of wrestling. The guy's not giving up, you know, he's fighting, they're choking him. He's still resisting. Bingo, the uh, the uh, the death, uh, which was um, you know accidental, quote unquote. But uh, obviously, they weren't thinking about the the severity of the alleged offense. Uh, however, the offense escalated to a felony when you strike a police officer. I guarantee you those that their police reports, because they're great report writers, are going to say that they were. Struck by this man, it's now a felony. A battery on a police officer. Next, you have a felon that you're fighting with, and you may use up to and including whatever force it takes to restrain that person. Uh, up to and except deadly force, unless there are certain circumstances where the other person is using deadly force, or where if the person is allowed to, to flee, that there will be some great public danger, like. So the guy who just committed a homicide, who just uh, raped the baby, uh, you know, et cetera, and you're, you're in pursuit, you know, you, 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 I'm just giving you a general generalization. There has to be something serious before uh, intentional uh, uh, um, <clears throat> power to, to kill to be used. So, had the, the guy to the ground, said nothing. And then he would, and then he could have turned around and at the very least made a complaint to the attorney. I'm falling when he some uh, homeless guy who was trying to get 50 to, to, to buy a beer or something like that. I don't, I don't have no idea. I can only guess on that. But I can almost, with, with, uh, with surety tell you that the reason why it got to that point is because 
we got frustrated. They fed off of it. Uh, they encouraged it. Uh, they went back in this state, so to speak. And they, you know, basically, they, they know they got there. When, uh, when you start getting angry, you, you're not going to win that battle. You, you touch them at all. You just touch them. Put your hand on their shoulder when, when, they're, when they're in that uh, you know, frenzy feeding mode. You know, uh, you, you're, the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the bloody bait in the water. You're, you're, you're going to go down. So, uh, so uh, uh, and in retrospect, and he just got silent. Uh, uh, if they had a legitimate uh, reason to, uh, to have him identify himself, now, uh, is, is there ever a condition other than operating a motor vehicle? I'm asking you, Richard. Is there ever a condition that you know of where you have to, where you're required by law to produce your identification? A police officer, uh, he's, he's been doing something illegal, something, uh, some, some, uh, some misdemeanor, or what they in his presence. He's, he's been arrested. Are you, are you required to produce that indication? The answer is no. I, I was okay. never, wow. I was, I was about to say, I think so. I don't know. The answer is no. Wow. Absolutely, unequivocally no. You are, you're not wow. required. It's not, not, it's not, not in Germany, not yet anyway. And then you hit him down that, that, that road. Uh, and just, you, you don't, you, you, are you required to be a driver to walk the street? You know, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, yes. You know, are, are, yeah. Are, are, yeah. Are you required? Are you required to get the state permission to marry the person, the, the, the woman, or, or, or the uh, significant other that you love? You know, why, why do we do this? Why, why do we go and get licenses uh, to do things that, uh, that, we, that we have a right to do already? And all we do is do what? Now, people, people uh, I have a lot of people involved in divorces, et cetera, and they're wondering how the state got so involved in my family affairs, and they're going to dictate to me who's the custodial parent, who's going to be the living parent, who's going to pay child support, and whose child support is going to be absorbed uh, uh, as, as the custodial parent, all these things. How do they get involved? Because you're married to the state. Because you went in and you made an application, and you said, here's, here's the person I love, I want to I, I, I want to marry this person, and then you went to the state of Florida and said we do in this marriage, and they said, well, for a price I will. If you fill out this application and you meet my requirements and you pay me some money, I'll give you a license and you can get married. Well, now guess what? It's you and her, or your significant other, and the state. You, and they now have a a a, a legal interest. And not only your family and your marriage, uh, have you ever heard of a, uh, of, of, a, of a corporation going out of business? Have you ever heard of the term dissolution of a corporation? Richard? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do they call it when you get, when you get divorced? It's a dissolution of marriage. So it's a dissolution of your corporate uh, agreement with the state. Why not X the state out in the first place? And marry the person that you choose to marry, and because you're over 21 years old, you're up the age of majority. You have to lose a right as a thinking human being to, to do what you choose to do without state permission. You don't need a license to get married. You don't need a license to, to, to drive a motor vehicle, you know, etc. Uh, and, and I, I know I'm, I'm rambling again, but take a look at uh, at uh, airplanes. And, and motor vehicles. Those are very important things that we want to make sure people are safe, et cetera. Well, how do they, how do they run the motor vehicles? Do they get a license? You have to understand the difference between a license and a certificate. A license can be revoked, can, is, it, it, it can be changed. A certificate is something to determine your competency. All pilots have certificates, certificates of competency, including my, my good friend, uh, Kim. He was a captain for uh, for a major airline. He, he thought he had a license. He doesn't have a license. He has a certificate. Every plane has an N number. Nobody ever pays for that tag, for that, that N number of a plane. So, but, uh, he pays one time for the education to get it certified. He gets certified every year, and he never pays for that number. We pay millions, and with inflation, probably billions of dollars in this country for licensures and tags every year and all the sports insurances and and now it's to the point where uh, uh, if you don't pay your child support, they 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 take away they spend driver's license. If you don't pay your income tax, they carry a driver's license. Well, they've never taken away a pilot's driver's license, uh, driver's license, I mean, certificate, 
uh, for not paying taxes or for for uh, 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 not paying child support because it isn't a license with the state. It's a certificate of competency. We need the same thing here to protect ourselves. Because I remember Doug asked me one time, he said, I suppose you think that we're in that you could just go help the shelter down I-95 and, at 120 miles an hour and go off the bridge, you don't hit anybody, you should finish this time. I said, no, they should be lost for that until a reckless driving. When I am when I am an imminent danger to somebody, when I'm a missile going down the road, you have every right to stop me and slice me. And to tell me or take point against me, et cetera. But this whole process of receiving a flicker ticket and uh, all the cameras, uh, the red light cameras, uh, uh, does anybody not know that it's simply a revenue scheme? I mean, everybody knows that. And nobody's doing anything about it. Right? We beat every single one of those tickets, those tickets to get daddy, and, and never stand up in court. You yeah. know how to do it, you can beat every single one of those every single time. Terry, I have a really important question. Well, actually, two. One is, where does our rights go when Homeland Security comes in and we become a domestic terrorist? And the second question I want you to be able to answer, and we'll go over uh, if you can stay with us so you can answer this, but how do people get in touch with you and your information? So first, Homeland Security domestic terrorists, because you can be a domestic terrorist if somebody calls you, you can get on their list. Okay, I, I understand that. And when you're talking about a privatized commercial uh, uh, act, activity like airplanes, et cetera, uh, you know, you're teaching the system to continue to do what it's doing. So you go in there and you present yourself to these the Homeland Security people and you present yourself to their, to their, uh, to their, to their authority and their jurisdiction. It, it may not be a, a very pleasant answer for you, but the free market can certainly tell the airlines something really quickly that people just stop flying. If you stop using that because of the of the uh, of the uh, uh, oppression that is caused there, then then I guarantee in a very short period of time the free market uh, they would be out of there in a heartbeat and they would have their own security there. It would be a lot more respectful and it would be a lot more like it should be. But we just try to make sure everybody's safe and nobody's got something they shouldn't have on here. But, you know, these guys are like, you know, okay, it's this way. It's more than three ounces. Uh, can't take it with you. Go over here and talk to this uh, officer. And we're going to you. Take your name down, et cetera. Now you want something to et cetera, et cetera. Now, what are you going to do when they come for you as far as uh, when they come for you in mass, et cetera? I don't see that happening, okay? I don't see the Ebola virus uh, issue. Being uh, the, the key to uh, 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 the government going house to house and having stuff and putting some change. There's too many people out there uh, that, that, that aren't going to go along with that. And I'm one of those people. Okay, so uh, uh, that's highly unlikely. I mean, uh, this government, which is controlled by the people who control the money, and everybody I'm sure knows that. Uh, is uh, has, has designed itself and combined itself to incrementally take away our rights. Now, look at the difference between when I was born and what I knew about my rights and when my children were born and what they know about their rights. So you say, hey, the first thing you do is you get the school system, you, uh, you, you make them you know, public and free to the public. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll raise my hand. I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that my hand out. I'll put my kids in there for free and, of course, they're going to determine the curriculum, et cetera. And, uh, and uh, uh, that's how we got to uh, the, the position we're at today. But as far as uh, them coming and, and uh, 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 United Nations uh, vehicles coming on the street and they can handle all this stuff and put us in the tournament camp, and government is very good at, uh, at always having a backup strategy. Why does government have underground tunnels, which everybody knows about? And underground cities uh, where they can retreat to in times of uh, cell unrest, perhaps, in times of nuclear problem, a uh, biochemical problem. Now, they're not necessarily intending on, on uh, using it, but they are very good at double and triple and quadruple backup. That's what they 
So these internment camps or these uh, these uh, FEMA camps uh, that, 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 that people are talking about perhaps may be used someday, but I don't have a feeling, a strong feeling, that it's going to be any kind of soon because there's too much of an awareness coming out. I've been doing this for for uh, for really since, uh, since 1990, and in that time, uh, on a scale of one to ten, one being how awake uh, the population was then, it's a six now to me. I am so excited about people waking up and, and actually intellectualizing the fact that they're not free, that they don't own property, that uh, even if you pay your mortgage, you still got to pay it back to the state. You know, and like uh, in England, uh, you know, the source of the feuds, they tax it the Lord and the Bears and the, the Knights, uh, the fight for the King, and uh, they would all pay some kind of bonus, either in either in service of the King or in wheat or in chickens or whatever the case may be. Or who the King takes access to? Nobody. And he owns everything. So you want to know who owns with the country and the property? All the money. All the money you'll see. The guy you pay taxes to, you pay your property <laughs> off. You can't, you can't sit on your, on, on your, uh, on your butt porch and, uh, hope your life and want to bless your navel. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to still produce somehow and pay those taxes. Because if you don't, they're not gonna give you the money to buy you the house. They're gonna kick your rear end out and they're gonna uh, help somebody who's, uh, who's got the money to, to, uh, to pay the taxes that you now fall out of favor with the king and you're on the street. So, the, the answer is just understanding that. The answer is just becoming aware. I think we're on the precipice of, uh, of a global enlightenment because of this, uh, uh, the internet, uh, this extremely exciting movie. And, and it's depressing in other ways too. You can bring up all kinds of scenarios, uh, you know, what if, what if, what if. And I really don't deal with a lot of what if. I'm seeing success, 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 success. I'm seeing uh, a person's rights are are are, uh, are attempted to be offended by the police. Uh, they they act properly, and the police officer back backs off. And in some cases, uh, they let the part friends. You know, we need to tell them that we don't like what they're doing anymore. No more, hello, how are you, officer? No, you know, when you walk through the restaurant, and good morning, sir. No, you know, they don't deserve sir. No, they don't deserve it. What are they doing? No, they certainly are coming to the scene of the crime uh, to clean up the bodies after after a death, and because they're taking it that way, and you couldn't protect yourself and your family, you and your family are, are, are laying dead on the floor, and they're they're, they're very good at, at, at tidying up so the next person can move in. But, uh, you know, where are they, uh, you know, uh, when you actually need them? Well, they're, they're uh, oftentimes, it's, it's it's incumbent upon you to, to be able to protect yourself, and that's why we have Second Amendment. People may agree with it, they may not agree with it. It's irrelevant. You don't have to. You don't like it? Don't carry it down. Me, I carry it down. I, 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 I don't trust my government. I don't, I don't trust uh, uh, the times that may be coming when the ball collapses. That's what I'm going to be afraid of when the ball collapses. The people who don't know what you guys are learning right now and understand that. They are going to be the ones who are jumping off the bridge. They are be the ones who put a bullet in their head and say, oh my God, how could this happen in America, et cetera, et cetera. You know, when, when things fall apart for a short time while the press is being made, uh, these people are going to lose their life savings and the, and the huge amount of money. I'm not talking about the ultra rich. I'm talking about uh, the, the, the supporters of, of, the, of the welfare state, of the, of the big government. Uh, you know, they're going to be the ones that are going to be shocked and awed. You know, uh, I am the land, not a great one, but uh, I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to wake up one morning and hear the news that the dollar has uh, has, has has collapsed and uh, and be a complete devastation like a lot of people will. Uh, and and even uh, there was people back in the uh, uh, in the, in the 30s, when they had the Great Depression, who committed suicide and stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera. So, Jerry, uh, we want, uh, you know, all, all the power. Jerry, we, we agree with you that there absolutely has to be change. 
We want you to talk a little bit about your book, and they can get it on Amazon, or I don't know if you have a site, uh, and also about your YouTube channel. Okay. My, uh, do you like people to get, uh, your, your, do you like people to get your ebook form from Smashwords? Does that work as well for you as Amazon? Well, actually, it, actually, it's better if you go to longsimpleprint.com. That's law of okay. simple term dot com. Uh, but you can get the Smackwords, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple, uh, every outlet. It's, it's an ebook. It's not a, not a, it's not, not an in hard uh, uh, cover. Uh, and, uh, I, I will eventually uh, do that. I, and also, for those of you out there who are listening, I appreciate uh, the opportunity that you folks have given me to, to be some kind of a voice. Uh, if you're interested more in this, uh, of course, uh, Richard and Sherry are, are welcome to do what you can get on my show. I'm going to, I'm starting on a, a blog right here as well. And I'm going to be teaching this, uh, on a, uh, you know, once or twice or three times a week. You're going to hear my, uh, <coughs> raspy voice on the air and you can call in, ask questions and you can, uh, and, and, I, and I, I can help guide you. Or, in some cases, uh, I'll recommend uh, that you get an attorney based on your situation. Uh, in other cases, uh, it's time for you to, you know, pull up your bootstraps, start learning what you like. Uh, it's not complicated. It's not hard to do. You don't have to know all the laws. You just have to know how the system works. Uh, it, it, it's like the attorney said previously, it's not that hard to go through law school. It's not because I'm familiar with the entire curriculum. It's not hard to go through law school. It's just all it is is, is, uh, is civilly uh, uh, breaching cases. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an understanding of, of how the system works and the rules of procedure. I mean, you go to a meeting and you have the Robert's rules of procedure, and you see why they have them. Because everybody gets up and talks at once, and nobody knows what the heck's going on. So the guy calls on you, you got the floor, okay, sir, you time to fire. Uh, next, uh, I make a motion, I second it. That's all this is. That's all this, this whole system is. You don't know how to, to, to use it. So you feel like a stranger in a strange land. I know how to use it. I've been there. I've done it. I'm not an intelligent person. I'm not any more intelligent than anybody you know. Trust me. Because uh, i got a friend of mine who can fly a twin engine uh, plane, and I've been in a lot of twin engine planes and, and a small plane, and, and I'm not very good. To me, he looks like he's a genius. So they, you know, this guy can do all this stuff and talk on the radio and feather this, trim that, and uh, land here and go there and read this instrument and that instrument. I, I'm lost. I, but if I put my mind to it, I can learn how to do it. So you folks can do the same thing. It just, it's, it's, time, it's time to wake up. If you wake up and start understanding what your rights are and what your limitations are, you're going to have an entirely different experience. And you're not going to be afraid of it. Fear is, is, is your worst enemy. And that's what they do. They, they spook the cattle. You know? Oh, and, and, and what do we do? Please come and take our rights from us. Yes, yes. Call them me at the airport, et cetera. I'll do anything to, to save Michael. You know, people are, are inured into this uh, the government system. And uh, no matter whether the majority rules, which it shouldn't, and we have this system, it's going to collapse. That's unequivocal, that's mathematical, it's going to collapse. So, uh, anyway, if you get my book at, at Smashwords, or uh, if you go to my site, you'll see some, uh, uh, so you'll, you'll see all my links to my YouTube, watch, you know, free videos. Uh, I have a little store there and stuff. I'm putting more stuff in there all the time. Uh, I do the motion briefs. And, and, uh, and, and uh, how, to, how to conduct, uh, 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 you know, how to block your jury, sticking the jury, uh, how to conduct uh, cross examination, direct examination, what that means, uh, how the court's set up, the plaintiff, the defendant, the judge, what's the justice job here? Well, you got a football game, you got a referee, the judge, the judge, the referee. You have two uh, people in that serial system, uh, butting heads, and you got the judge on the sideline going you know, down. So five yard penalty, et cetera, et cetera. That's all I'm there for them. He's not a wise man in a black robe uh, uh, espousing uh, wisdom to the masses. Uh, he can become that, like police have, because we have been dumbed down deliberately. We're not stupid people. 
we're very intelligent. What we do out in the world, you know, we do very well. But we're never encouraged, in fact, we're discouraged going and trying to represent yourself for it. See how, see how people uh, treat you like you're some, some uh, outcast and poor idol. You know, so they don't want you to know this information. This is the most powerful information you can know. This is the answer. And it simply is you knowing it to make the game happen. It will change. Everything will change. They won't exist anymore because no government can exist without the consent of people. I don't care if it's a totalitarian government or not. In your past history, it may have existed for a short period of time, and when the, when the people come together and say, we don't want you no more, they go and they get rid of them. They dump them. They do whatever, whatever happens. Uh, I'm sure you can, can, can probably give me a uh, hundred examples of countries that have come and gone. Uh, why are we in this position? Because we want. We love your attitude. We absolutely love your attitude. And I'd like to um, get a commitment from you for you to come back because there are so many questions from the audience that we didn't get to. Yeah, I'd love to. You betcha. I mean, uh, it's my pleasure. And, uh, and uh, uh, as long as you don't uh, mind being uh, bored to tears, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going back. I think people absolutely need what you have, and I'm going to find a way to integrate what you have into our curriculum at our school. And I don't, I haven't offered that to anybody. Um, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. But now, you folks do exactly what I do. You're doing exactly what, you, what I'm doing. You are, you are, you are, you are doing the uh, uh, self help. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, you know. Everything that's chemical isn't bad, but everything that's chemical isn't good. You know, uh, are there are, are, are there alternatives? Of course there are. Are they way better than we have? Of course. You guys are the experts in that area. But what do you do? You empower people to take uh, take control of their own bodies. Uh, you empower me, uh, not, maybe not you personally, but uh, but the self uh, taking care of yourself. A little bit. I lost 92 pounds last year. Okay, by juicing. I am an avid juicer, and I uh, and I haven't felt for four years old, and the weight came off uh, uh, regularly, and uh, and uh, had no health problems. Uh, I had uh, uh, an, an extreme excess of energy. What I'm putting in my body now is uh, I just never realized, like I think because of my age, it's beginning to uh, you know show that it's weak, weak something like. But just stuck into your body, your body goes, yeah, you know, and, and you feel down and you feel uh, uh, lethargic. You know, now, I, I feel like a million bucks, uh, not a million bucks, so at least 900,000. <laughs> Okay. I think that's I think that's that's a shining shining example of exactly what you know. You're talking about what Sherry does in terms of you yeah. know us being empowered with health and knowledge to take care. You know, to really have a foundational pile of information. And that's the exact same thing you're doing in terms of giving us the empowerment to have the feeling of when a police officer stops me, now I know, you know, no. <laughs> no is a possible no, answer. No, say, no. Remember, remember, you just say no to drugs, just say no to government. No, 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 no. It's a bumper sticker. No. It's a bumper Seriously. sticker. So how do we it's find out when around. your blog talk radio show, when do, how do we find out when I, your blog talk radio show is going to start? I, uh, uh, my dear friend, uh, Phil Haxton, who's listening uh, to uh, as we speak, uh, is uh, my producer, and he's setting things up, and it should be within uh, a matter, and I would still be very, very happy to be a guest on your show, to be a guest on my show, because it's not going to just be about, about light, it's going to be a lot about that. But it's, it's also uh, dealing with, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, understanding yourself, uh, spiritualism, uh, the whole idea. Of this, this whole, I believe, uh, and I'm, I've seen that on a variety of uh, videos, that we, we are at the, the, the precipice of some, some great enlightenment. And, uh, and, uh, I, I'm going to hold that as a vision. I, I don't have that quite as positive yeah. an idea, but I, I will want to, I do want to hold that as a vision. 
So we are heading towards this phase of enlightenment. And so I yeah. suggest to people that they check back in at lawinsimpleterms.com <clears throat> and you have, you know, amazing information on YouTube and I really, uh, I mean, that, you know, after this show I'm telling people about your book because I think it's something that we should have on our bookshelves and be reading now. Okay, now, uh, aside from me making money off my book, let me assure you that I have to feed my family. I have to, uh, you know, to make it me, unfortunately, in this uh, monetized system that we have. The vast majority of everything I have, like uh, like Sherry was saying, is free. You, know, you don't have to pay for anything. You don't got to go in the store and buy anything. If, if you find something that uh, is uh, interesting to you, you want to spend five bucks or something like that, go for it. You don't want to, it's okay. I'm fine. You know, I go, I've got clients. I don't need people to, to make me rich. I'm not uh, a monetary rich. I'm not looking for, for, for that uh, 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 motivation for people. I, I, I'm just, uh, I guess it's a selfish motivation. Uh, I want people to wake up so my children and your children uh, aren't going to be the next generation who have been so indoctrinated that these types of conversations aren't going to be permitted. This is going to be a crime. We will not be able to talk like this. We can. We can't see it stopping. But guess what? When we die off, our children who come up in this new world order are going, going to be uh, uh, toxic and torn in their and uh, and the lack of their rights is only going to be Grandpa's old story about how it used to be in the old days. And it's going to be easy to, to, to pick a population like that who is and who does not have any real personal experience with what life means and what freedom means and what liberty means, and the government needs to be involved in every part of our lives, there's not going to be anybody there. Or if there is the case of dissident, he's going to be taken care of uh, in short order. And there won't be very many of them. Everybody's going to be afraid. Don't we'll talk about government and look at Russia. We were having this about, you know, it really is, we're back to, you know, it is exactly what we we're talking about, is, the, you know, really about being empowered. And I yeah. think it's such a it's such a powerful tool to have that sense of actually have you know being empowered. It's very powerful whether it's in your own health care or being aware of your rights. It's really great. I know we have to wrap up because I think we have a class coming up. But it's been really great, Terry. I I do feel we'll have to have you back, and it'd be fun to be a guest on your show when it starts happening as well. Okay. Um, I appreciate you guys very much, and thank you very much for the time and. Uh, uh, shout out to everybody in the audience who did listening, and uh, uh, I will uh, let uh, Richard and Sherry know when I uh, belong comes on. And it's going to be the Foundation for Public Awareness, that's the name of it, and uh, Great. it'll be uh, it'll be coming to you shortly. All right. Thanks very much again, Terry, and okay. thanks everybody. Uh, have a great weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you on uh, Tuesday. Thanks again, Sherry, for the great weekend. Yes, Bye. Sherry. Thank you so much, Sherry. Bye now. Uh, for those on blog talk, um, the show is officially ended, but we do have something that we want to play for you that we think is is pretty important. We've tried to play the beginning of it uh, of the show, but it was about are you on a terrorist watch list? And I did put this link in for you. Um, by the way, in doing his vocal print, very solid foundation, very knowledgeable, very aware on many levels. Uh, he's an enlightened being. Uh, he doesn't exactly know what to do about the information he has. That's where that F and F sharp in his file becomes a problem. For those of you who've been uh, watching us do these vocal prints, that F and F sharp can also mean uh, low back pain. But he says he feels great, so that's likely not it. But where this is, is getting his information into fruition. So a great guy, very believable. I've got his book. It's hard to put down. It gives you a lot of answers. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the remainder of this. Uh, roll it back just a little bit. Because he tells you how they decide if you're a terrorist. And you can be a terrorist just because somebody sent you a letter from some 
organization. And then you lose your rights. And that's one of the things uh, I would like to have Terry back to talk about. So this has got about three like, minutes left. Oh, these kids look like they're hanging out a little bit. I'm going to go and first follow them right now. When you take that, and then you look at this wide-ranging definition of what constitutes terrorist activity, um, there is so much room open for massive violations of civil liberties. Uh, the other component of this that Ryan and I discovered that I think uh, bears a lot of scrutiny is that all of these principles in this previously undisclosed watch list of guidance uh, were shared in some form or another with at least 22 foreign governments with a network of private contractors. Uh, the NTTC would not tell us uh, the corporate entities that are giving this information, nor would they tell us the foreign governments. This, our government is sharing this information, uh, including designating its own citizens as known as suspected terrorists, with all of these foreign states and with private entities, private contractors, and not sharing what amounts to a parallel shadow legal system where we're not allowed to know the rules. We're not allowed to know what it would, that we, what, what it would be that we do that would have our government secretly designate us as a known or suspected terrorist. Ryan, who decides uh, the people that get on this list? And what are the implications for combating uh, crime, having such broad criteria for inclusion? Well, the watch listing community is composed, as Jeremy said, of uh, foreign governments, private contractors, as well as broad range of executive departments and agencies, obviously CIA, FBI, um, you know, local law enforcement. All of them sort of work together to share information about people known as suspected terrorists and, and sort of disseminate that information broadly. The, the law enforcement impacts and, and the counterterrorism impacts are actually really important uh, to look at because for years, this system has been criticized in, in internal government reports, in the media for gathering too much information, at basically creating uh, a, a haystack, a huge haystack, which makes it much more difficult to find the needle. So basically you have people within the watch list of community complaining that they're drowning their information. This is this is a, a criticism that's surfaced again and again for years. How many people are there? Well, it depends on what list you're talking about. If you're talking about the, the terrorism screening database, which is the watch list, it, it's, it's uh, increased to several hundred thousand people over recent years. The Thai database, which is the government's largest repository for terrorism, terrorism information, obviously they keep these numbers uh, secret, it is much larger than uh, the, the actual watch list, and that, that information is kept classified. The, okay, the other one is from CNN, and it's just as important, and I'm putting it up here in hopes that um, we can get this on the recording. And more damage control from the Department of Homeland Security, the same department that issued a report suggesting returning war veterans were susceptible to extremist groups, also issuing what it calls the, quote, domestic extremism lexicon, end quote. It's like a dictionary with definitions from various extremist or terrorist groups and sub-definitions uh, here's an entry, anti-immigration extremism, the Department of Homeland Security's definition, people who are, quote, highly critical of the U.S. government's response to illegal immigration and oppose government programs that are designed to extend rights to illegal aliens, such as driver's licenses and in-state tuition. Here's another one, single-issue extremist groups. According to the DHS Dictionary, there are individuals who focus on a single cause, such as animal rights or the environment. They are also described as special interest extremists. And this, anti-technology extremism, also referred to as neo-Luddites. These apparently are individuals who are opposed to technology. A DHS spokesperson today told us the dictionary was not authorized that it was recalled shortly after it was let out, and state and local law enforcement officials have been told to ignore it. Joining me now, Congressman Pete King, ranking member of the Homeland Security Committee. Congressman, great to see you. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you. In your reaction to, to this document? Uh, Lou, actually, it's very distressing. You know, uh, you and I can have a lot of fun with this. We can show how ridiculous it is, how off-target it is. But the reality is the Department of Homeland Security is supposed to be defending us against another attack from Islamic terrorism. That's the reason this department was created. And yet, it appears to be the gang that can't shoot straight. And also, to me, it's missing its purpose. Uh, you went through all those different definitions of uh, 
uh, different types of extremists. Nowhere in that dictionary do you see the term Islamic extremists. So the, the department was set up primarily, let's face it, to protect us from another terrorist attack from uh, Islamic terrorists, and yet they talk about everything but that. In fact, the only time they've used the word terrorist since Secretary Napolitano uh, took over was uh, you know, several weeks ago when they said the returning veterans and uh, anti-illegal immigration uh, organizations could be terrorists. So this is really wrong, and the fact that it's, it's happened twice now shows that it's a department that's really out of control. There's a tremendous lack of discipline here. I, I, my reaction to this, two things. One is this document then could have been produced uh, by someone in China under Mao Zedong, uh, or it could have been produced in the Nixon administration. Uh, this is the kind of egregiously offensive uh, product coming from the agency. I mean, I can't even pronounce the, I can't even string the words together uh, that make up this agency. What is going on with this agency? We're also told, by the way, that some of the people in the agency are offended because their work has not been supported. Yeah, well, uh, uh, too bad for them. The fact is that this, uh, I believe, is a unit that's gotten out of control. By the way, the civil rights unit within the Department of Homeland Security uh, had been opposed to a number of these findings they made, and yet this unit was still able to get this report released. So this is something that, in all seriousness, Secretary Napolitano has to address this seems to be a rogue element in the department. At least I hope it is. I hope this is actually a reflective thinking of the department. And what you said is really important. I'm maybe more willing than you are to accept a strong federal role when it involves going after terrorists. But other than that, we have to be very, very careful about having the federal government getting involved in thought control. I mean, I really don't want the federal government to be determining uh, whether or not a person feels certain ways about the environment or about animals or about uh, certain uh, religious issues uh, should be considered an extremist. That, to me, is a type of thought control, mind control, which is very dangerous. I think the department should be set up to target specific terrorist groups that are affiliated with overseas groups uh, or uh, tending to bring about violence to our country. Not people who may have views that are out of the mainstream by, uh, you know, uh, uh, liberal standards or conservative standards or anyone else. We have to, we can't allow a department such as this to really try to, uh, you know, hinge on free will and free thought. Uh, Congressman, I, I assure you, uh, I, I'm, I'm as prepared as you to use the federal resources to protect the American people at any time. Uh, uh, the, the idea that this, this department has again uh, committed what looks to be like, uh, it, it, it's beyond a political correctness. This is a uh, as to me, it appears to be absolutely agenda-driven, and with the uh, the complicit, uh, if uh, acquiescent, approval of uh, Janet Napolitano. At some point, is she not to be held responsible for what is happening in this in this what is obviously a poorly guided, misguided uh, agency? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, she called me two weeks ago to say they made a mistake on the first report. Now we have the second report. And this is back to back, and. Uh, so I, I think that she has to produce very, very quickly. This is serious. I mean, you can have a department which has no real power going off on its own. Okay, maybe it's a waste of money, but no real harm done to the country. You have a uh, department like this which has real power and uh, trying to and uh, uh, making these type of mistakes or intentional policy. Congress, this is dangerous for the country. Congressman, this is the same Secretary of Homeland Security who said she didn't want to use the word terrorism. That she had replaced it. She said with pride to Der Spiegel. Or with the expression, men cause disaster. This is the same secretary of the Department of Homeland Security who told Canadian television that terrorists of uh, September 11th had crossed over the Canadian border. At what point does, is there accountability? It has to be very soon, and you're right. She said we cannot call al-Qaeda terrorists, we cannot call bin Laden terrorists, but it's okay to call a person who opposes illegal uh, immigration potential terrorists or returning veteran of potential terrorists, or to put out this dictionary where the department is going through its analysis of what kind of thought control we should have. No, uh, John Napolitano is, really, is running some real risks here, and she is going to have to be held accountable very soon. Uh, we have a committee hearing coming up in the next week. We're going to really uh, work her very much. Congressman King, thanks for being here. Lou, thank you, as always. We'd like to know what you think about all of this. Our poll question is, do you believe the Department of Homeland Security has lost all touch with reality? I think most of the administration now, and even when this started in the Bush administration, they've lost touch with reality. Just look at what's going on with the IRS and the Attorney General. 
I'm sorry, I have to run. I've got another class coming up. Um, stay in touch. We're glad you were here. I'll talk to you later.